which was really, which were very, very bad because I, I was born in a house like that. Uh, it's, uh, the roof was metal. Actually, the walls were bricks, but the roof was metal and had many holes. So in winter, as a child, I remember we never had a long night's sleep because all these buckets hanging, hanging up, and when they are full, they have to empty them at midnight. So always our uh, sleep was interrupted. And in uh, winter, uh, this is in winter, and in summer, it's very, very hot. You can't breathe, you know, metal, and it's yeah. very sunny here. Also in winter, it's very noisy because of the rain. Uh, cats always jump on the roof, so always, always it was really, you know, uh, noisy. And outside was sand, open uh, sewages, uh, public toilets, uh, no running, until now we still have no running water. Actually because it's an agreement uh, between the United Nations Agency and the Lebanese government, it's a temporary place for Palestinians because they are refugees here and they have to go back. Yeah, and I heard so, that they don't let you to build proper houses. No, 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 no. This is also uh, water, it's forbidden, drinking water. Uh, any water, actually. Uh, water is forbidden. Electricity is forbidden there. Phone lines is forbidden. Yeah, nowadays. Until now, we still have the same regulations because, if, oh, because these, are, these are signs of settlement and they don't want us to settle in the place. I tell you, you can't survive 60 years without electricity. So uh, when they built the camps, the United Nations rent the land from the Lebanese government. They discovered that we have water underneath, so they make water wells. So it's very salty, very contaminated. It's, not, it's only for but by usage. But the of Lebanon, you cannot have water. No. Oh my God, yeah. no electricity. No. No, 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 because this is a temporary place. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, so until now, we still buy water from outside. Before 70, this is they discovered the water underneath in uh, early 70s. But before, people used to collect water by hand for every everything. Uh, electricity, how we can live 60 years without electricity? So people brought electricity to the camp. The Lebanese, it's, it's legal, illegal. I don't know how to describe this. It's legal because the government knows that we have electricity, but they refuse to legalize it to give us meters and make it proper because that means you are settling here. So uh, and then, but still I don't know if you, filmed, if you filmed the entrance of the camps, you'll see thousands of lines hanging on the top. This is how we brought electricity to the camp. And we pay, we pay a definite amount of money every month, regardless how much you spend because there is no meters. And it's not because people don't want meters, the government doesn't want to re legalize it. But you pay the government? We pay through the popular committee in the camp. We have in the camp, because the government, they have nothing to do inside the camp. What we have, we have the structure. We have the United Nations, they deal only with social, health, educational, but nothing on the political side, or even, I don't know if you know that, Palestinians, refugees, 48, they have no right to protection. Oh my goodness. Unlike their, the other refugees in the world, because the UN Convention, uh, Geneva Convention in 1951. Um, so I have a question. If somebody kicks a Palestinian and then the Palestinian, I mean, defends himself, then he's against, it's against the law because if there's no right of protection. No right of protection. Because of this, we have many massacres, we have many. You know, because the right to protection to the refugees was on in 1951. And it happened, you know, to be, we were refugees 1948. And this is what makes me really angry because who put these regulations and these conventions? They are not a holy thing came from God or it, they, it's people who make these decisions. So it, what's the problem? If you are a refugee after 51 or before 51, you are a refugee. You should have the right to protection. But they consider the right to protection only for the refugees after the convention, after 1951. So if you have left before 1951? No, out. you are out. And we are the, but the, only the Palestinian refugees who are before 51. Also, uh, 
So I was talking about this, uh, the infrastructure. Um, the camp was just so I have a question. You said that you get electricity from it. So why does the electricity go outside? Because it's not. No, no, everywhere because it's it's not legalized. It's not. It's if there is if the weather is windy, they will all cut. If anyone, you know, it's not uh, organized. That's it. Yeah, and it's uh, also a poor area, so they they are deprived from electricity most of the time. Um, for water, as I said, we still buy water to drink, uh, and we buy the city water, not the bottled water, because this is very expensive. What we buy, it's Beirut city water. Um, you mean the ones that are in the tanks? No, 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 the ones you buy in gallons. Uh, okay. the yeah, tanks and containers. From, uh, the, from underground, and it's only for washing, washing up, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is how the, the United Nations started, and they started to provide education, social uh, programs like uh, food, distribute food, have, they, they never had hospitals, but they have the clinics in each camp mm -hmm. to see people with basic, like, basic services. Uh, then in 1970, in Lebanon, PLO came to Lebanon. So it's very well known in uh, the West that PLO is a military body and political. As a matter of fact, they are, of course, very famous in these aspects, but they also have educational departments, social departments, uh, health departments, which health PRCS, Palestinian Red Crescent Society. Uh, educational department was mostly scholarships. They uh, give students scholarships to continue their for, uh, education, university education. And uh, social, it's, you know, uh, support people who can't manage their, uh, their lives. After 1982, so before we had the United Nations and the BLO. In 1982, when BLO evacuated from Lebanon and left, so all BLO uh, departments collapsed. And very little things stayed. The United Nations, for many reasons, their services became under-resourced and very, very limited. Uh, I heard from, from them, it's because the population of the Palestinian, of course, increasing enormously, and their budget is roughly the same. So for this reason, they can't meet all the needs. Uh, after the Oslo Accord, uh, Palestinians in Lebanon started to call themselves the forgotten, because everyone started to focus on Palestine uh, in the uh, uh, Palestinian territories on how to establish the authority, how to do this and that, and the refugees were completely, completely forgotten, even from uh, a, from international uh, donors, and as if the Palestinian problem was solved. And if you go and if you read the Oslo Accord, the Palestinian refugees, 1948, were mentioned only in a small paragraph. Still, we lost all the attention from the international community, both on the political side and also on the support side. So the situation started to decline more and more and more. Uh, people lost all the motivation. Uh, I, I always hate to say my hopes, I lost my hope or my people lost their hope. I always like to use this expression, they are frozen. Because if I want to talk highly about hope, I don't think I will sound realistic looking at uh, what's happening in the whole area, the whole region. And to lose it, it will be the real catastrophe, not 1948. For this reason, I always say they are frozen. So one day, are they still frozen? they're still frozen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But actually, always hopes give you a, a nice window. It's like you never see things black, black, black. You see something nice with the, with the hope. And this is the problem if people lose the hope. Also, I think uh, media did not really, uh, I always blame media because I felt, I felt as Palestinian, uh, we did not take our rights from the media and the media mis misled the world. 